Sundus says, if someone does good deeds out of the fear of people, and he has the thought, what would people think about me if I don't do it? Is this kufr? Now, a lot of the brothers and sisters send me tens of questions every single day, doubting what is kufr, doubting what is shirk, to the extent that people ask, I wouldn't say silly questions, but questions that are silly. So someone says, Sheikh, if I eat with a fork instead of a spoon, and I smile inside of myself, I don't show it to people. Would this be considered hypocrisy or kufr? Because I'm mocking the ni'mah and the blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal. What kind of questions are, uh, are these? So definitely people have a problem. The problem lies in two things. One, their lack of knowledge. Because knowledge erases all doubts. Number two, they have opened the door to shaitan, to Satan, to mess up with their minds. So he is ma making them too careful to the extent that they go to extremes. So everything to them is kufr or shirk. Had they had the proper knowledge that defines what kufr is, what shirk is, had they done some reading that would increase their knowledge about aqidah, they wouldn't have fallen in such traps of shaitan. So going back to kufr, kufr is disbelief. You can reject something of Allah's laws. You can have the arrogance to not accept Allah's commands. Rejecting anything from the Quran, which is in black and white. Rejecting anything from the law of Allah Azza wa Jal that is undisputed. This is kufr, disbelief. Satan, when he was ordered to prostrate to Adam, he knew Adam, he knew Allah Azza wa Jal, he saw all the angels around him. His disbelief was out of arrogance and def defiance. So this is disbelief. Shirk is associating others with Allah, whether in lordship, rububiyyah, or worship, uluhiyyah, or in Allah's beautiful names and attributes. So just before the break, we were discussing Sundus' question, which is, if someone does good deeds out of the fear of people and he has the thought, what would people think about me if I don't do it? Is this kufr? This is not kufr. Doing something for the fear that people would talk negatively about you, if this thing is a form of worship, in this case, this becomes riya. And this is also known as minor shirk. Because what caused you to do it is the people, not the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. And why do we say form of worship? Because, for example, if I solve my homework and I do it on time so that the teacher would not reprimand me, is this kufr or shirk? No. These are things that are normal in life. Doing them has nothing to do with kufr or shirk. But if I, for example, were to give charity, and my motive is not to please Allah Azza wa Jal, rather to not be embarrassed of Tom, Dick, and Harry, then this is minor shirk. 
the Prophet ﷺ was asked once, O Prophet of Allah, a man fights out of jealousy, meaning that he's jealous for his people. A man fights to be described as brave. And a man fights for the booty of war. Which one is a martyr in the cause of Allah? The Prophet said, والسلام, the one who fights to uphold Allah's name the highest. Which means that all of the three are not for the sake of Allah. Also in hadith, Al-Imam Muslim, which was narrated by Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, the first three to be thrown in hell on the day of judgment are, and he mentioned one of them. Well, actually he mentioned three, but let's quickly go through them. One is a charitable person, a person who gives his money in charity. Another is a scholar. And a third is a fighter in the cause of Allah. All of them, after being shown the favors and blessings of Allah upon them in this life, were asked, these are Allah's favors upon you. What have you done? They all claim to have been charitable, been knowledgeable, died in the cause of Allah, just to please Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah tells them, you have lied. You gave in charity so that people would say you're generous. You taught people so that people would point fingers and say he's a scholar. And you fought in the cause of Allah so it appeared so that they would say you are brave. And it has been said. Take them and throw them in hell. Therefore, the most difficult thing in this life is sincerity. To be sincere in what you do. It's extremely difficult. And nowadays, it is more difficult because of the media, social networks, where you get people having followers and Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you name it, they've got it. And people, all what they seek is fame, to be known, to be acknowledged. And this throws a lot of the Muslims straight to hell. Because these platforms are what define them. The urge to be famous. People come up to celebrities of Islam, of da'wah, not of the arts. And they say, Sheikh, pray for me that I become like you. Why do you want to become like the Sheikh? He says, I'd like to be famous. I'd like to come on TV screens and I'd like to do this and do that. This is wrong. Your intention should be to please Allah Azza wa Jal. If pleasing Allah behind the scenes, if pleasing Allah Azza wa Jal behind the curtains, no one knows you, this is the best. But if you must be exposed due to the nature of your work, such as an imam or a scholar, in this case, we have no control on this, and we pray to Allah that he make our hearts steadfast on Islam. Imam al-Shafi'i, may Allah have mercy on his soul, said, I wished that the whole of this population, every single person, I wish they would benefit from my books without attributing any of it to me. Subhanallah. He means that 
He does not want to be famous. He does not want to be known. But he wishes that people would benefit from his books and from the knowledge he gave to the people. We are quite the opposite. We would like to be known. We would like to be famous. Whether people benefit from our knowledge or not, it's beside the point. And this is very dangerous. So Sundus, yes, it is quite wrong to do something out of the fear of the people. However, this may open the Pandora box. If you listen to these whispers and doubts, this is where shaitan utilizes these things to his advantage. Meaning, after what you have heard, most likely, whenever you want to do something, shaitan is going to question you. Ah, you're going to pray. Why are you going to pray? So that people would not say, Sundus does not pray. So what to do? This is minor shirk. It's best not to pray. Sit down. This is how he works. He knows what goes in your t into your mind. And he manipulates you. And you should not do that. With proper knowledge, you can defeat him easily. As Allah mentioned his plotting in the Quran as weak. Verily, the plotting of Satan is weak. So you can easily defeat him. How? The Salaf used to always refresh their intention. So it was reported that two of them were walking once, two scholars, and they saw a funeral passing by. So one of them told the other, let's go and follow it. You know what great reward is in following a funeral, praying on it, and then burying it. Great, huge amount of reward. So the second scholar, the second person said, wait a second. And he paused for a second, and he said, let's go. So the first one said, what did you do? He said, I fixed my intention. Subhanallah. What does that mean? It means that when he told him, let's go and follow the funeral, his intention was, okay, let's go. Because his friend told him to do so. But when he wanted the true reward from Allah, he needed sincerity. So he said to his friend, wait for a second so that I can change my intention instead of following you, rather to follow the funeral and seek the reward from Allah. And this was done in a second. So whenever shaitan comes to you and says to you, oh, there's a person who needs money and he's begging or he's asking or he's sitting and we know that he needs money and people say, let's give our friend some money so that he could buy food for his family tonight. And they give him money. I'd like to get some money from my pocket. And then shaitan comes to me. You're showing off. You're doing this so that they would not point fingers at you and say that you didn't pay. True. This is a possibility. But my course of action would define my future and how shaitan would be able to utilize this or not. So I would ask myself. Is there, a, is there a possibility that I'm doing this because of the fear of the people? The answer is yes, there is. So what to do? I could care less about the people. I'm going to give it whether they are looking or without them knowing. I'm going to give the money for the sake of Allah. Azza wa Jal. So I force myself to fix my intention. And by doing this, Shaitan is in trouble. And this is why scholars say, when you start to pray, Shaitan comes to you and says, ah, you're prolong prolonging your prayer. So people would comment and say, oh, mashallah, he is a, a good worshiper. 
what to do, make it quick. Scholars say whenever shaitan comes to you with such a thought, make him depressed and angry by saying, no, I'm going to prolong it longer than what I was intending in the beginning, just to make you eat your heart out. If you do this once or twice, shaitan will take his distance. He will keep his distance for a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, maybe a couple of years until you put your guard down and then he will attack again. This is how it, does, it, it, it goes and it will continue until the day we die. We are in continuous struggle with our enemy. And this is ongoing until our souls depart our bodies. So, inshallah, this answers your questions, uh, Sundus.